guy is Cameron McGrone. Uh, this is a linebacker out of Michigan, uh, a guy that, to me, is extremely raw. If we were in a perfect world, he would have gone back to school. You're talking about a redshirt sophomore. Uh, this is a guy with only um, like 12 starts under his belt uh, or so. Um, not a ton of experience for Cameron McGrone. And I, honestly, I think he could use more seasoning, but um, it was a very tumultuous 2020 season for him. He dealt with a ton of injuries. Um, it wasn't the kind of season he was hoping for. You can see the, the talent. You can see the potential. But um, I, I just think he needed more time. But he decided to jump ship, uh, to try his hand at the NFL. I don't blame him. I never blame a player for leaving early. I always talk about not knowing circumstances. And... Um, I, I, get your money while you can, and he, he dealt with a ton of injuries. You know, th This thing is not guaranteed to you. Go get your bread. If, if he talked to the NFL advisory uh, board and they told him, hey, you're more likely than not a, a day two pick, why not? So um, let's go ahead and, and flip this card over and take a look at Cameron McGrone. And so uh, you start with his strengths, and it's athleticism and speed. Uh, this is a guy that can just flat out run, and you can see it. When he gets to open up, there's no doubt about it. He gets to the ball carrier immediately. So uh, he's got tremendous athleticism, can get anywhere he wants to on the field in a hurry. So that's not something you worry about. And, again, when we, we're talking about um, some of the better linebackers in the league, there's one common denominator. They can run. You know, when, when we talk about DeMario Davis, and this is a guy that is more likely than not a Mike Backer at the next level. So when you're talking Mike Backers, you know, the Darius Leonard's and, and the DeMario Davis's and the, you know, Bobby Wagner's, all there's one common thread there. And, and really any linebacker in this league for that matter, weak side, Mike, does, uh, or, or Sam, it doesn't matter. You've got to be able to run if you want to be uh, classified as one of the best and, and Cameron McGrone can do that. Agility and short area quickness, again, another big trait that, you need to be able to have, especially if you're in the middle of the football field, if you're going to be checking running backs out of the backfield, you're going to get a lot of uh, option routes. You're going to get a lot of choice routes by the running backs. You're going to get a lot of uh, Texas routes over the middle of the football field. You better be able to stick your foot in the ground, change directions, and run with that running back. He can do that. Physicality and stout at the point of attack. Um, he's a guy that doesn't turn down contact. And, and again, if you're going to be in the middle of a defense, you want a guy that's not afraid to take on a pulling guard, not afraid to take on that guard that um, is combo blocking and coming off of the double team and getting to the second level or take on that center and, and try to get to the ball carrier. And, and even if your job on that particular play isn't necessarily to make the play, but rather to just fill a gap, Cameron McGrone is able to do that. Um, tackling prowess. Again, I'm big on tackling. Now, you know, not everyone is huge on, you know, getting people on the ground on a consistent basis. You know, when I read some of these uh, reports on some of these players, and and again, not everybody's watching the same games that I'm watching. You watch the, the uh, uh, you know, three games where this guy was outstanding, and, you know, I watched three games where he struggled, we, we have a, a very different opinion of the same player. Uh, but, you know, tackling for me is important in this league. And there are a lot of times where we just gloss over that. You know, the guy missed four tackles in the game, but we don't talk about uh, lack of consistency tackling and getting guys on the ground. Uh, but he is a guy that does get players on the ground. Uh, blitzer and closing speed. As I've mentioned, um, at the next level, if you want to be considered one of the better linebackers, you got to be able to get to the quarterback. You got to be able to affect the quarterback, not just drop in the coverage, not just stop the run, but you got to be able to impact the game at, at multiple levels. And being a blitzer is one of them. And when you've got the kind of speed that Cameron McGrone has and the closing speed, rather, uh, it, it really changes things. When you, when you run that that 
that green dog blitz where the running back stays in and, and you overload a side and that back decides to, to go and, and protect off to the left. And now you've got a clear shot right up the A gap and you take off. It's the ability to close that distance between where you are and the quarterback that makes all the difference in the world between a completion or a sack or an incompletion or a ball that ends up getting affected in the air and gets picked off, whatever the case may be. So he's able to close the distance between um, the ball carrier and himself. Uh, he's, he's tough. He's got toughness. And he showed that this year in 2020, uh, dealing with an, a hand injury. You know, he had a wrap on it and he kept playing ball. And we see players do that all the time, but it still takes a level of toughness and intestinal fortitude to be able to say, hey, put a cast on it. I'm going out and I'm playing, especially the linebacker position where you need your hand. It's one thing to do it at the cornerback position where you may not catch the ball. Most of those corners can't catch claps in a whorehouse anyway. But when you're a linebacker, you need your, both your hands because you need to corral guys. And he was out there playing ball with a, with a club on his hand. Um, motor, he's a guy that's just nonstop. You know, nonstop. It, it, it isn't always in the right direction, <laughs> but it's 100 miles an hour wherever the hell he's going, and I can respect that. Uh, weaknesses. I talked about the lack of experience at the top of his breakdown. Um, this is a guy that, to me, uh, really uh, could have used another year of seasoning in college. But that said, um, it is what it is. You know, only 12 starts under his belt. And uh, I really, the five that he got this year were kind of, you know, a disappointment if you ask many because it was a step back from what they saw in the seven starts as a um, redshirt freshman. So uh, where he really jumped on the scene, he, he, there was an injury to the starting middle linebacker. He jumped in as a redshirt uh, freshman, and he, he exploded onto the scene, played exceptional football, and when that guy was healthy, his job wasn't waiting on him. You know, Cameron McGrone had taken over that spot. So, um he didn't follow that up with the kind of campaign you were hoping for. But again, injuries too. Uh, and then COVID-19, you know, is a big part of that as well, maybe. Uh, GPS malfunction. This is my biggest uh, issue with him. This can be cleaned up, but this is part of lack of experience. He can be duped very easily, and his GPS seems to malfunction quite often. Uh, misdirection sends him in a tizzy. You know, if you... Um, fake a uh, 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 pitch one way, he's running, chasing the fake pitch four or five yards in the wrong direction before he realizes, oh, uh, quarterback actually didn't pitch the football. Uh, if they, if you get any kind of run action fake, he's chasing the run action. So if it's a stretch to the left, if it's outside zone, but it's a fake to the left, he's chasing outside zone like nobody's business. He's attacking the line of scrimmage only to find out that, the running back doesn't have the football. Uh, quarterback pulled that out a long time ago. He's running towards the right and looking for an uh, option out to his right. Um, zone read, you know, I, I, I don't kill guys on zone read. It's hard uh, when uh, you, you get to read option type plays and the quarterback can pull it. Or, you know, if you've got running back responsibility, whether the, you want the quarterback to pull it. If that quarterback isn't a tremendous athlete, you want him to pull it. But I can't tell you how many times he tackled the wrong guy where I felt like, ah, you probably could have tackled the quarterback, but whatever, you know, I'm not going to kill him for that. But his GPS does malfunction. Durability, I talked about him uh, with a, a broken hand, had a cast on it, also uh, finished the season on uh, IR, uh, was carted off in his final collegiate game with a knee injury. So, again, this is a guy that, again, not a lot of seasons under his belt to be able to say, hey, this isn't an issue you know, in his first season of full-time being a starter, um, he dealt with a couple of injuries. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. And then can he be a three-down linebacker? I mean, a lot of what I talked about omitted him in coverage. I didn't, you didn't hear me speak one time about him in coverage because there are question marks about his ability in coverage. Uh, sometimes in space, he's a little aloof, uh, a guy that – sometimes loses sight of where he is on the football field in uh, relationship to uh, receivers. A lot of times he's running to a patch of grass instead of running to, you know, a receiver running into his zone and matching him. So there's a lot to be left to be desired with Cameron McGrone in that regard. And so uh, you, you have to ask, is he a three down linebacker at this point? Now, he's got all the tools to be one. I just think uh, there's going to be a little bit of a period there where he needs to develop. And um, how long does that take? 
Is he given an opportunity to do that properly? Uh, we'll see. And that's always the crapshoot when you're talking about the NFL draft is where do you land? You know, if Tom Brady doesn't land in New England, is he Tom Brady? We don't know. Uh, but in any event, I, I project him as a day two uh, draft pick. You know, I'm more on the third round side of the day two selection than I am the second round. But I could see someone falling in love with the attributes of Cameron McGrone and taking him in the second. But I think he's a third round pick all day long. I don't see him getting out of the second day of this draft. And my comp for him is Demario Davis. And I remember Demario Davis being a raw prospect out of Arkansas State coming into the league. The Jets took him in the third round. And I said, man, this guy's got a ton of talent, but he's raw as the day is long. I look at Cameron McGrone and I think the same exact thing. This guy's got all the attributes to be an elite um, uh, Mike Backer in this league, but he just needs some seasoning. And when Demario Davis came into the league, he went to the Jets and they weren't happy. They, they, they traded him to the Browns, I believe, or he either left in free agency or he was traded. And then that didn't work out in Cleveland. He ends up in New Orleans and the rest is history, you know, and, and he's one of the better middle linebackers in the league right now. So uh, Cameron McGrone reminds me a lot of Demario Davis from a skill set standpoint. We'll see if it turns out to be that way. Um, he is my number seven a linebacker in this draft.